here with Taylor. Nice to meet you, Taylor. Hi. Whereabouts are you from originally? Uh, Hay River, Northwest Territories. And did you grow up there? Um, partially, yes. And where yeah. else did you grow up? Uh, when I was in foster care, I was in Grand Prairie. And when my mom got custody of us, me and my sister, we moved back to Hay River for a year and a half and then moved to Saskatchewan, North Battleford. That's where my dad, or our dads live. Yeah. So how was Hay River? Hay River is, it's awesome. That's where I know home is. That's where, you know, I'm homesick right now. It's been over five years since I've been home. And I have plenty of opportunities, but because of the dope, right? Yeah. And how was North Battleford? <laughs> it's ghetto. It's really ghetto for its size. It's like on the top 10 uh, for crime, crime rate in Canada. Like per capita, right? It's only like, yeah, 45,000 people. And there's lots of crime, especially like violent crime. Because there's lots of gangs. There's 12 reserves within an hour radius. 12 reserves. That's fucking nuts, man. So what type of things would happen there? Well, there's a lot of Indians there, right? It's m more organized and stuff. Like, they're, you know how here it's just like the provincial government. And, you know, there is some say over the land, whatever, da-da-da. Like, the natives here. But in Saskatchewan, they're like... B BTC and BATC is really connected to the Saskatchewan government like they're fucking really organized and shit but they're also racist as fuck towards white people and because I'm half white that they had a hate on for me it's so fucked up my own kind how long did you stay in North Battleford for? Um, I lived there for like three or four years with her mom and then you know like an incident happened a couple of them where my mom got sick like literally scared to live there. Oh, well, because of all the crime? Mm hmm That half affected us directly a few times. Do you remember what it was like in Grand Prairie? <laughs> yeah, it was um they're very uh I don't know, stuck up and the school that I went to was I don't know, it was a very rich school, so like, you know, my foster parents didn't buy us the up-to-date stuff. They bought it from fucking secondhand stores. Well, their kids who are the same age as us, so like my peers and my sister's peers, got brand new shit. So, yeah, that sucked. Wasn't happy in Grand Prairie, that's for sure. My mom had to fucking come down every other weekend until she just moved over here to be closer to my sister and I. Do you remember when you started using drugs? Um, yeah. Like drugs, drugs. Like I started doing coke first when I was like 14. And yeah, because in Hay River, it's very popular there. Like in the north, like there's nothing to do other than drinking and doing coke, whether it's like the powder and the crack, because there's diamond mines there. So when the guys and girls get back to the mines, they're loaded. And they chose coke because with even weed, it stays in your system. So if they get piss tested, you know, they'll show weed in their system. So coke leaves your body in three days yeah and then I started like easing down when I was 18 yeah turning 19 and yeah which city was that in? Edmonton that's where I came from I lived a lot of places but Edmonton is where I've been living prior to here for the past five years and how is it in Edmonton? <laughs> It's a lot different than here. It's more like straight up and like, you know, like, ooh, like in your face, like over like five bucks. 
10 bucks, whatever. Like, if somebody owes you money, like, you're, you don't, that, they're not going to let that shit slide, you know. You can't even let your own friends know what you have, otherwise they're robbing you and shit. Like, it's rough there. But, more straight up than if you could kind of kept, catch my vibe. So what brought you to Vancouver? Um, <laughs> uh, you know, just ended up. It was reckless, whatever, you know. I just did something and ended up over here, let's just say. Yeah, so, um, I left Edmonton with my boyfriend, Duffy, and, yeah, uh, we just went to give his sister a ride to Calgary to go get her stuff from, I don't know, this, like, woman shelter. They were gonna throw out her stuff if she didn't come grab it a, a specific set date, right? So we go, and, um... I don't know, it was alright, up until Duffy started falling asleep at the wheel, so his sister's like, let me drive, and so she hopped in front, and we're only like, you know, maybe two hours outside of Calgary at this point, so me and Duffy just hop in the back and go to sleep, and we wake up, and we're not in Calgary, like, where are we? We're in fucking Sik Sika, it's a fucking reserve outside of Calgary, like, she made it sound like it was just right on the way to Calgary, but no, it's out of the way. It's like, you know, it's for sure out of the way of Calgary. And we were stuck there for almost three fucking weeks. Uh, it was 30 bucks a point, but like a dry reserve. So even when I had money, I had to wait all night and he had no side. So he's bitchy and... <laughs> You know, like it's, we don't know these people, so we just felt uncomfortable. So we're like, you know, really grouchy because I'm sick, he doesn't have dope, and then also we're like sexually frustrated because we're like, you know, not used to be in this situation, we don't have any privacy, and yeah. So, I, I how's it been since you've uh, been in uh, Vancouver? <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you that much that there's nowhere like this in the world where downtown east side where people just do drugs openly when I first got here seeing that shit I was like just sketched out to do that because like in Edmonton the police will like harass you if they see you once having you know any probable cause like you're always on their radar and then also the people too there's a lot of like crime stoppers and shit the wannabe heroes that think they're like changing lives by fucking being little snitches or whatever trying to be cops so it's different over there there you have to really hide what you do and uh, like here I was like holy shit this is like what I seen on TV how they talk about Hastings on the news and stuff <laughs> in the tents and whatever but other than that once you like leave downtown east side then it's very nice very beautiful it's a nice city are you homeless right now um yes yes but technically no because we don't have a place my boyfriend and I like I'm staying at an Atira woman shelter but you know, I'm not gonna just go inside and while my partner is outside, I so I sleep outside the shelter with him. And how is that? <laughs> oh, let's, I don't know, let's just say like it's not fucking ideal. I mean, there's no dignity or whatever, but I'm not gonna just leave my partner. And what are some of the craziest things you've seen down here? <laughs> it's really not as it's not as crazy really as like I don't know I don't know it's just it's not as crazy as like other cities I think but I do say 
just seeing people like a bunch of people fucking shooting up like on the road or I don't know just like how they just do that shit right out in the open and like uh, yeah I don't know it's just there's nothing like it same with in the cops when they don't give you like if they see that you're like doing dope I notice they don't really give you a problem as long as you're respectful about it whatever but otherwise they don't pay attention unless you're being violent or just being a nuisance to people and what are some of the craziest stuff you've seen in Edmonton I don't know, it's just what kind of stuff, their crazy stuff could be a whole thing. It's, ask a more specific question. I don't know. Well, just anything. Sorry, I'm fucking stoned right now. Like, I can't think of just like off the top of my head, but I just know that it's like more buffed than here. And what do you think could be done to help homeless people in Vancouver? <laughs> if they got rid of the down altogether, because oh man, like some of the people, I hate to say, are like down users because they're fucking gross. Like who the fuck shits on the street down here? That's the craziest thing. Is there signs that says "Please do not pee and poo" <laughs> like on this property? I'm like. What you know, it should give people those, like, doggy poop bags. You don't see that anywhere else. No, not even close, man. People take, like, people having, they just, like, squat and whatever, and they don't even fucking wipe, you know, their ass or fucking wash their hands, and they're right beside one of those outdoor sinks. It's like, you sick fucks give us fucking drug users a bad name because you smell like shit, and then... Oh, I fucking hate those type of people. Or the ones they're bent right over like this. It's like, stand up straight, man. Fuck, otherwise you're this. And they try and talk smart, right? And they're like fucking halfway to the ground anyways. You could just kick them in the face easier. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome.